Okie dokie, okie dokie, okie dokie, okie dokie. We should be live. We should be live. What's going on, guys? How are you guys doing? One second. I'm kind of like fucking um, editing a video in the background as well, so may not be as coherent as I'd like to be. To be honest with you. To be honest. But um, yeah, uh, interesting news today. Dimitri Bivold versus Artur Bekabiev finally announced, officially confirmed, June 1st, Saudi, uh, Saudi Arabia. Excellent fight, light heavyweight titles, undisputed, unbeaten, contrasting styles, pound for pound implications. Amazing fight. Quite frankly, it's one of those fights that doesn't really need a big undercard because the main event speaks for itself. But the undercard features the Matchroom versus Queensbury 5v5. And that has produced, on paper at least, some really interesting fights. Some really interesting fights. Drunk Irishman, what's up? Cannon, what's up? Nordic, what's up? So the 5v5. Uh, there's one domestic fight, Craig Richards versus Willie Hutchinson. I think Craig, uh, Craig Richards wins that fight. It's a decent domestic fight. But after that, you have Nick Ball versus Raymond Ford. Really good fight. Nick Ball, in many people's opinion, beat Ray Vargas uh, for the WBC featherweight title. Got a draw. Maybe unlucky in some people's eyes. He's fighting Raymond Ford, WBA champion. Had a really good fight with Kolmatov last time out. I make Raymond Ford a favourite in that one, but it's a good fight. Deontay Wilder versus Gili Zhang to me is interesting. Both guys looked average against Joseph Parker. Reluctant to let their hands go. When, when Zhang threw punches, he hurt Parker. Didn't do it enough. And Wilder did nothing in that fight. So Wilder versus Zhang is basically a loser leaves town fight. Wilder's 38, Zhang is 40. I've whoever loses that fight is done. There's no coming back from it. It's a loser leaves town fight. A lot on the line. I would favor Zhang because I still think he is he's more willing to let his hands go. And also, I think he takes a better shot than Wilder. I favor Zhang, but given where both guys are at, anything can happen there. That's solid. Dubois versus Hergovic, I find interesting. Dubois, for me, obviously unconvincing. Lack of heart, questionable stamina, punch resistance, etc. Gets flustered very easily. But Hergovic hasn't exactly pulled up trees either. Really wasn't impressed with him in his last fight against MC McKean. Wasn't impressed with him against Zhili Zhang. I know Zhili Zhang, in, in retrospect, has looked better. And, and that looks better on Hergovic, but... Hergovic's body language in that Zhili Zhang fight wasn't convincing. He was borderline turning his back. <sighs> Hergovic, to me, has been a big, big disappointment. I'd still favour him over Dubois, but I wouldn't be surprised if he lost it. I really wouldn't be surprised. But it's a really good card. It's a really good card. But main event, Dmitry Bivol, Artur Betabiev. I noticed that as well, fight film, at the press conference. But Terbi have seemed a little... Just a little irritated in the presence of Dimitri Bivold for whatever reason. Which I found interesting. I've got a feeling, I've got a strange feeling, that fight is going to be more one-sided than people expect. In favour of Paterbiev. I think Bivol's going to be in the fight for, for like the first four or five rounds, maybe even winning on points. But he's going to have to be exerting so much to do so. I think he's going to have to be operating at 100% from round one. And doing that for 12 rounds against Paterbiev, you literally have to be perfect. I'm not sure Bivol has it in him, to be honest with you. To, to, to maintain that for, for 12 rounds while sustaining the punishment 
and continuing to maintain his construct and game plan, I think he'll get stopped. I really do. I think he'll get stopped. If he can't get Baturbiev's respect in that fight, I don't think there's any chance he can win. I don't think there's any chance he can win, to be honest with you. Wilder Duck incoming or a loss. I think he'll probably lose. I, I give him a shot. I give him a shot. Given how uh, Zhang looked himself last time out, but um, I make Zhang, yeah, I make Zili Zhang a favourite. Yeah, I'd make him a favourite. Yeah, great card, Virtuoso. Great card. It's an amazing main event. Amazing main event. I think Hergovic stops Dubois late or simply outlasts him. Could be wrong though. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. Honestly, that's one of those fights where I, I really wouldn't be surprised whatever whatever way it goes. I really wouldn't be surprised. People are overrating Dubois because of the Miller fight. Miller was a punching bag. I agree, Nordic. I do agree. But at the same time, like, Hergovic hasn't pulled up trees. He's looked iffy, in my opinion. He looks so sloppy now. In the amateurs, he was, he was much more dynamic. As I was saying in a previous stream, he had a style similar to Vitali, that kind of lean-back style. Very hard to hit clean, very, very uh, accu active with his lead hand. And he could catch you by surprise with his right hand. Um, kind of unorthodox in his approach, though these days he looks a lot more cumbersome, in my opinion. He's a, He looks a lot more cumbersome. It's a good fight. Yeah, I did hear about Willie Lamond. Yeah, he, he passed away due to... Um, he had a seizure while driving, passed out, and um, yeah, he subsequently passed away. So yeah, rest in peace to Willie Lamond. Good, good domestic fighter back in the day. Gave Amir Khan. He gave Amir Khan a really hard fight when Amir Khan was on the come up. Also fought Eric Morales, and Morales, he spoke about Willie Lamond after their fight, and he was saying how. How, how much he was surprised by Limond and his skills. Yeah, the LDBC channels are very quiet right now. That Wilder signed with uh, Slave, Ma Slave Massa Eddie. Yeah, I know, right? It's kind of crazy. I wonder now, in retrospect, Wilder, at this point in time, do you think he looks back with regret wasting his career with Al Heyman? Logically, Baturbiev should win, but there's just something about Bivol. He finds a way to win, even when he logically shouldn't. He's one of my blind spots, you could say, so I'm hesitant to pick against him. Yeah, I, I, I probably feel in, in the back of my mind I'm underestimating Bivol, but I just feel it with this one. I, I just feel it. It, it it would have been nice to get Dubois versus Mark Damori for comparison's sake. Bro, this fight, Haney Garcia, I have to admit, I've given that fight barely any thought. I just can't with Ryan Garcia. Ryan Garcia basically is going to be used as a high-profile jobber for guys like Devin Haney who can't sell. That's why this fight is happening. Ryan Garcia is raw defensively irresponsible, low boxing IQ, low emotional IQ, uh, but but popular. You know, uh, Devin Haney will beat Ryan Garcia comfortably, in my opinion. I wouldn't be surprised even if Devin Haney stops Ryan Garcia or if Ryan Garcia quits. That's what they're using Ryan Garcia for. He'll sell the fight because Devin can't. They'll try and get Devin a win over Ryan to build his profile. That's it. Ryan's a high-level jobber. That's what he is, or a high-profile jobber. He's not there. He's not serious about boxing. We saw that in the uh, Tank Davis fight. First fight on pay-per-view. Mega fight, supposedly. And he quits. First first sign of trouble, or, or dived, whatever you want to say. So I, I have no faith in this guy going into the Devin Haney fight. As much as I think Devin Haney's overrated, he is a professional. And he'll beat Ryan Garcia. He's better than Ryan Garcia. Bevo for me. Yeah, a few people are picking Bevo. 
Okay, yeah, my gym session cancelled today. I think Lemond passing was was the reason why, because him and my coach are good friends. God bless. Yeah. <laughs> Filipina and Dubois both quit in the ninth. Yeah. It looked like that's that's what I was saying about Hergovic. In the in the Gili Zhang fight, it looked like he wanted to quit. And I haven't really got, got rid of that from my mind. He looked like he wanted to quit. Yeah, uh, Robert, uh, for Bivol and Baterbiev, personally, I think it's 70-30 in favour of Baterbiev. I hate it when people only talk about him being a puncher. The guy has great footwork and is a great boxer, yeah. Like, nobody really talks about his ability to counter on the on the front foot. His ability to throw punches while moving forwards. Uh, he's got a good shifting technique down. Doesn't look as refined as a guy like Golovkin's, but he shifts very well with his punches. Surprising foot speed as well. He's quite fleet of foot, Baterbiev. People act like he's some Brandon Rios type of pressure fighter. I know what you mean. I know what you mean. Plus, he's got an excellent jab. Good distance control. Might be like Cole Frosch, too big, too strong. I know, yeah, exactly. Could be. Yeah, he Wilder wasted his career with PBC. We could have had Wilder versus AJ years ago. Yeah, exactly. But maybe he doesn't see it like that. He made a lot of money with Heyman. And this is a great point, yeah. I think Heyman was probably the best thing for Wilder. He needed to be protected like that. Otherwise, his career would have been ended quickly. Yeah, you might you might be right. You might be right. Yeah, I agree. I agree, Nordic. I agree. I think that's what they're doing with Ryan. But even like this time around, it, it seems like the Mexicans have abandoned Ryan. Like the, the Mexican Mexicans. No, I'm not talking about fucking um, Mexican Americans, but like, I think he's lost that Mexican fan base now, Ryan Garcia. Yeah, this fight's going to confirm that Ryan Garcia is a hype job. Yeah, 100%. Maybe he proves me wrong. Listen, I'd be surprised. I This is what I will say about that fight. Regardless of how it goes, because I think Devin wins regardless. But regardless of how it goes, I'll be shocked if I come on Sunday morning and say, do you know what? Ryan Garcia gave it his all. I'd be shocked if I if I were to say that. I'd be shocked. If I felt that Ryan Garcia went in there and really gave it gave it his all, I'd be very surprised. I'd be very surprised. The only thing thinner than Wilder's legs is his resume. Yeah, I could see it going. I could see it going down very similar. I think Baterbiev will will break Bivol down like he did Vodzik. I think Bivol will look good for a bit, but the damage will accumulate. 11th round TKO for me. And again, like Vodzik was a beautiful boxer. People forget how good Vodzik was, but Vodzik had power and he couldn't keep Baterbiev honest. He couldn't really get a break for himself, you know, by, by buzzing Baterbiev or, 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 or making him wary. He couldn't do it. I can't look past. Like, sorry, I can't look past Beyonce's straight right hand down the pipe against Zhang. Stationary meathead. Maybe, maybe, but like Wilder, Wilder in that last fight, man. Like the only couple times where Parker caught him flush, Wilder was hurt. And I think this is what I'll say about that cop end. We know we know Zhang can be hurt, but I still feel he can take punches better than Wilder. I feel there's more chance of him taking a few Wilder right hands. Van Wilder taking a few Zhang left hands. Yeah, Garcia's like a 10 to 1 underdog. Yeah, I'm not sure how big of an underdog he is, but he, yeah, he's the underdog. But regardless, Zhang and Wilder both looked poor in their last fights. Both guys have power. And for both guys, it's it's a loser leaves town. So regardless of how we feel about it, uh, the fight has a lot riding on it. So I, I like the fight just because of that. There's a lot of jeopardy. There's a lot of jeopardy. So I like the fight. 
I like the fight. And also, by the way, what's up, PSK? Only problem for Baturbiev is that he has been through more wars and the age. Can see a split decision type of result either way. Maybe you're right, man. Maybe you're right. But also on the card, there's a prospect fight. Uh, Hamza Shiraz versus Austin Williams. That's a, that's a good fight as well. Hamza Shiraz has looked quite good since that Bradley Skeet fight. Uh, knocked out guys, uh, scored some good knockouts. Austin Ammo Williams, he's been hot and cold, but I believe there are there is there is some ability there. Austin Williams reminds me of um, Errol Spence in his style. Southpaw body puncher, good right hook to the body. If, if he can get close to Hamza Shiraz, who's a tall, lanky guy, he could do some damage on the inside and, and to the body. But Shiraz has a good understanding of distance, and he's got a nice knack of being, being able to time you at the end of his punches, and he generates a lot of power because of that. That's a good fight as well. I'm not sure how that one goes yet. Yeah, I heard this as well. Apparently, Parker said Zhang is the biggest puncher he's faced. It's a must win for both, I agree, yeah. And that doesn't surprise me. That doesn't surprise me. Yeah, but that's certainly true. B uh, Baturbiev has fought guys more like Bivol than Bivol's fought guys like Baturbiev. That is true. That is true. Zhang needs to use his Wu-Tang style in order to defeat Wilder. They applied no pressure, yeah. Bivol's opponents, you're right. Like, the Lyndon Arthur fight was basically a sparring session. Yeah, I, I see the Ortiz comparison, yeah. With uh, Zhili Zhang. Yeah, so Zhang is like, a, is like Ortiz with two-handed power... And Wilder's more fragile now, yeah. Yeah, the only difference is I felt I felt Ortiz was more active with his lead hand than Ji Li Zhang. But they are similar. They are similar. I think if it's if it's uh, Zhang from the Parker, uh, sorry, the Joyce fights, he'll beat Wilder. There's no doubt in my mind. Oh, you've, you've got ball over Ford. I have Ford. I just feel Ford's a bit more versatile. He's shown me a bit in that Kolmatov fight. He was losing that fight, getting outworked, trying to stick to his boxing. Realised he was losing and he, and, he, and he switched it up late and got the stoppage. I liked what I saw from him in that fight, to be honest, in regards to, you know, adjusting. So I, I take him over Nick Ball, who I think is one-dimensional, but it's, it's a decent fight. I think so as well. I think so as well. I think, yeah, that's how I... I, I think Bebo will be live early on. Maybe win some rounds, but I, I think he'll start to start to flag after round five. And it will turn into Vodzik part two. Yeah, he made Wilder his captain, Eddie Hearn, which is kind of crazy. Maybe that's just a sweetener. I don't know. I don't know. <clears throat> I do like what I will say about these Saudi Arabia cards I know some people complain about the atmosphere or whatever I like these big boxing cards being more like UFC cards where there's multiple fights we can watch not have to fucking wait for a trash undercard for, for hours on end I like the fact these cards are stacked they have like a UFC feel to them in that regard where UFC will have like five fights on the main card that you care about. Yeah, exactly. Let me ace. 100%. I feel the same way. Yeah, Richards versus Hutchinson. I'm not really interested, but domestically it's an okay fight. Plus no, yeah, exactly, Nordic. Exactly, no female fights. Yeah, that, that's the only thing, yeah. I do wonder, Bard, I do think this Saudi Arabia involvement is fleeting. I don't think this is going to last for a long period of time. 
maybe a couple of years or so, but hey, you know, I'll take it. I'll take it. <clears throat> yeah, UFC 300 was great. Max Holloway and Justin Gaethje was a crazy fight. Crazy fight. Yep. And the Saudi shows haven't got the shite women's fights. Did you see the state of the DAZN show this weekend? Yeah, I did. I saw the main event, but the undercard was so pants, I didn't watch it, bro. But I saw it on paper, and I thought, fuck that shit. We're not watching it. Yeah, I, I love the, the whole Saudi thing, though. I, I, I love it. It's kind of, uh, it's, it's like old school boxing, isn't it? Females like Sandy Ryan crying on Twitter that there are no females on the card and want a female 5v5. Well, listen, if you want that, fucking pester Eddie Hearn to make it. The Saudis don't want it. The Saudis don't want it. And it's funny as well because all of these sort of uh, promotional companies, these TV channels, they'll virtue signal and they'll have their um, sort of token appointments on their uh, promotional ventures but all that goes out the window when Saudi Arabia come knocking and I love it I love it all that goes out the window you think Eddie you think Eddie's gonna try and make a female fight in Saudi Arabia I mean it may happen but it'll be it'll be a rarity It'll be a rarity. Yeah, the card this weekend was good, Nordic. I can't lie. The card was good. Yeah, the boxing media will cover Big Nose over Paid Haney and that psychopath Garcia all day and give a five-minute clip to this card that is actually for boxing fans. Weird world, yeah. Yeah, there's, I, I have noticed that from the American perspective. There's definitely a resentment towards... Uh, Saudi Arabia's involvement in boxing. There definitely seems to be a resentment. I've noticed that from a section of fans on Twitter. It's weird to me. I don't give a fuck where the fights are unless they happen. I'm ha I'm happy with Saudi Arabia because it matches up with UK time. I'm very happy with Saudi Arabia or, or the Middle East. It, it means I don't have to wait up till five in the morning to watch some cunt get robbed. What's up, Apology Man? Long time no see. Hopefully you're well, bro. I lost money on Justin. Max had had him tired as fuck. I think he broke his nose in the first. Yeah, I think he did. But that was a gangster way to end that fight. Like, he, he won the fight, man, clearly. And he just said, fuck you. Let's stand in the middle and trade. And he then knocked him out. That's crazy. Crazy knockout. Yeah, I saw it. I saw it. Yeah, I saw it. Good, good card. I had a nap. I had a nap during the women's fights. Then, my, then got my missus to wake me up during the main event. It's nearly as bad as women's football. Like watching paint dry. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, US boxing at death's door. Did you see Jared Anderson this weekend? Really not impressive against a cruiserweight, Riyad Mary. And yeah, fair enough, Mary was there to survive. He wasn't he was there not to get knocked out, but come on, man. As I was saying, man, he is Jared Anderson is athletically gifted but technically flawed. Technically very raw. And he needs a lot of time. He needs a lot of time if he's going to go anywhere. Yeah, some good fights are part, uh, are part of the 5v5. Talking about May 18th or June 1st cards is more interesting than Devin versus Rai Rai. Yeah, exactly. I agree, Daniel. I agree. Yeah, exactly, uh, Razim. Exactly.
Do you think Alex Pereira could do anything at cruiserweight? Not in boxing, no. I have to say though, what he's done, what he's done in UFC is crazy. He was a kickboxer, two weight kickboxing champion in glory. Then he goes to the UFC and becomes a two weight champion. What he's done is crazy. He's arguably the best combat athlete in the world right now. Any sport, Alex Pereira. You could argue he's the best combat athlete right now. If we combine all the martial arts and all the combat sports, you could very easily argue Pereira is, is the best or the greatest. Yeah, it, seems, it, it seemed pretty good so far. Uh, another good thing about Saudi is there's not much BS. The cards aren't all over the place and the officiating is generally okay. Yeah, like Usyk versus uh, Joshua. Even back then, like the referee did a really good job, which is interesting. Yeah, bro, it wasn't good. It wasn't good for Anderson. I don't know where to. I, if I was matching him, I wouldn't know where to take him next. It take him next. Sorry. I'd probably, what I'd probably do if I was Bob Arum would be to use the rest of this year just to have him super active against lesser guys, get some knockouts, do the learning in the gym kind of thing. Yeah, I saw the Ajagba fight. He fought Guido Vianello, and that, that was a really good fight. Ajagba was hurt a couple times, and it could have gone either way, in my opinion. I don't think it was a robbery for a Jagba to get the decision. I think it was one of those fights, a draw or a round either way. It's a good fight. They should really, they should really um, rematch, to be honest. I want to see John Jones versus Tom Aspinall, to be honest. That's what I want to see in the UFC. One thing I will say, Fabio Wardley is a tougher man than Jared Anderson. Tougher man. I've not seen Anderson show that sort of heart. So, plus we've seen Anderson break down outside boxing, you know, crying like a little pussy next to Roy Jones Jr. Bloody, bloody, blah. I wouldn't mind seeing that fight, actually. They, they're similar in a way... Because they rely on athleticism more so than fundamentals. But if it becomes a fight, maybe you'd favour Fabio Wardley. I don't know. That'd be a really good fight. It's got no chance of happening, but it'll be a really good fight. He should run it back with Prince Charles Martin, yeah. Yeah, exactly. And uh, PSK, yeah, exactly. Anderson shows more fire on Twitter sticking up for, his, for his murderer brother than he does in the ring, yeah. Yeah, fair judging and refing in Saudi proves officials can be bought, yeah. Indeed. Indeed. Even if it's not, even, even if they're not like directly bought, you know, them, them them, judging a certain way ensures they get work in the future. They're treated well during fight week, pre-course meals, five-star hotel, etc. It's probably not the brown envelopes that a lot of people think, but they're just keeping, they're just maintaining their work, their workload, basically. That's how I would say it works. It's not like a brown envelope job, but more so they're just incentivized by by these promoters, you know, basically that they, they, they will get more work if they judge a certain way. Does he actually? I know he rehydrates a crazy amount. Devin Haney gets into the ring at the same weight Margarito used to used to at welterweight. Is that actually true? I wouldn't be I wouldn't be totally shocked. Yeah, I saw that as well. Eddie called Art, uh, Arta arrogant, yeah. He certainly had a chip on, uh, chip on his shoulder in, in this press conference. His energy was a little more 
um, aggressive, I would say. Yeah, he seems a little. He seems a little off. He seems a little off. I don't mean to stereotype, but did that guy have his dad in his life? Because I can find no exception. Or sorry, I, I can find no example where crying in public like that is acceptable with with thousands of people watching you. It's weird to me. It's weird, but there you go. And I see it all over social media as well. It's not just Jared Anderson. I see it all over social media with just random everyday people, grown men crying on social media. It's crazy. Yeah, you think Arta's trying for big bro Bebo? Yeah. I mean, he did against uh, Vodzik, didn't he? True that, yeah, I think that's probably what it was. I think he, he remembers Eddie accusing him of uh, taking PEDs, yeah, in the Callum Smith fight. It may be that. It may be that. that. That's a good point. Great fight as well. Frank Sanchez, Ajit Kabayel. That's a hard one. Mm, I'd probably lean towards Frank Sanchez. That's a hard fight to call, though. Oh, oh yeah, I do recall that, actually. That's true. Okay, Lawrence Cole said in Thunderdome's interview that he had been offered bribes. He forgot to mention he took them, yeah. The worst referee of all time. He only got that fucking job in Texas because his dad worked on the uh, commission. Awful referee. Awful referee. Truly awful. Shocking referee. Some of his... Bro, he's a terrible ref. Yeah, I, I've got Baterbiev late. I think that's the safe bet here, personally. Baterbiev late. Do you see as well, apparently um, Turkey Ala Sheikh wants the winner to fight Jaya Pattaya. Paterbiyev's got more, more frame to go to cruiserweight, but I think is too big. Yulin Kabayel uh, looked so good against Makhmadov. That being said, Makhmadov is, is very technically limited, yeah. Reason I favour Frank Sanchez in that fight, he's not going to be coming on to Kabayel like like Makhmadov was, you know, offering him a free target, essentially. He's going to make Kabayel chase that fight. Because Frank Sanchez, that's his role, right? He's a mover. Kabayel likes likes to do that as well. I think I think Frank Sanchez will make him chase the fight. And Kabayel's not as good on the front foot, in my opinion. Who's worse, Cole or Weeks? Probably as bad as each other, to be honest. But Lawrence Cole just looks like a slime ball. They're, they're both terrible. Mm. That's one of many examples, Joe Jackson. Yeah, Lawrence Cole in the Ricky Burns Omar Figueroa fight. Yeah, Figueroa could do what he wanted that night. It could be it could be a tit for tat fight PSK. I'd be surprised if it's um if it's if it's like a high octane affair. I'd be surprised. I'd be very surprised. Okay, I say weeks because he was less honest in the Thunderdome interview than Cole was. Okay. I, I I haven't seen the Tony Weeks interview. I don't think I have anyway. Yeah, Kenny, don't hurt Floyd. Bayless was also terrible. <laughs> yeah, he did. They did, yeah. They fought recently and uh, Willie Lamond today passed away as well. 
I'm good. I'm good, Lee. I'm good. So would I, uh, Rasim. I would rather see Opataya try to try to beat a couple guys at cruiserweight, beat Briadis, then maybe unify. And honestly, like I wouldn't even mind seeing Opataya try to go to heavyweight. Why not? I think he's very, very talented, Opataya. I think he's very talented. I'm talking like pound for pound level talent as well. I think he's very good. I think he's very good. And especially with uh, Joshua Fury coming towards the end, Opataya could be going up to heavyweight at the right time. Genuinely wouldn't be shocked if he won a heavyweight title at some point in the, in the distant future. I wouldn't be shocked at all. Maybe he'd even go to Bridgerweight, get a free title there. Usyk versus Opataya? Bro, that'd be a crazy fight. And by the time it happens... Because it wouldn't happen like in the near future. By the time it could realistically happen, I'd probably favour Opataya, to be honest. I think so as well. I think so as well, Matt. I think so as well. I think he'll be a problem. Yeah, he did, but he's I think he's now fighting for his title again against Briadis in a rematch. I'm not sure about this fight, Sven. I've not been impressed with Hergovic at all. I'm not sure about that one. For me, that's 50-50. I could see that one going either way. Yeah, he'd be he'd beat a Kole. He'd beat a Kole. Yeah, Opataya at heavyweight is intriguing, but first, I'd like to see him go for undisputed at cruiserweight just because he's head and shoulders above the rest of the cruiserweight division, yeah. The issue with cruiserweight, man, unlike when Usyk was there, is quite weak. It's quite weak right now, with the likes of Chris Billum Smith holding titles. No disrespect to Chris Billum Smith, he's a, t he's, a, he's a tough guy, good chin, but he's a basic, basic fighter. He wouldn't have, like, five years ago, he wouldn't have sniffed a cruiserweight title. Ten years ago, wouldn't have sniffed a cruiserweight title. When he had the likes of, even before Usyk, so Hook, Lebedev, guys like that. Yon Hernandez, those sort of guys. Steve Cunningham, Adamek. Back then, he wouldn't have sniffed a cruiserweight title. You know, Christoph Lodashek, guys like that. It's a weak cruiserweight era right now. Post Usyk. I... I I agree with you, Lee. I I agree. Can see Sanchez beating Caballero clearly in one of the worst fights ever. Yeah, I I kind of agree. I hope it's better than we think, though. You want to see you you want to see Alan Babich get killed? Let Let's have Opataya versus fucking Dave Allen. While while we're at it. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, Billum Smith is somewhere between British and European level holding a belt. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, he's got the better amateur pedigree. I think he's more physically robust. He's got a better chin. I agree with all of that, but I just haven't been impressed with him. Great question. Do you think old man Sergei could win a belt at cruiserweight? Who? So he wouldn't beat Opataya. Who else is champion? Noel Givor? I'd give him a chance against Givor. I'd give him a chance against Chris Billum Smith. Honestly. We'll see how he looks on the undercard. He's fighting on the Fury undercard, Kovalev, against some unbeaten Swedish guy at Cruiserweight. So we'll see how he looks in that fight and we can answer it. But based on what he did against Tervel Pulev, he could beat Chris Billum Smith, to be honest. He could beat Chris Billum Smith. Yeah, Jean Marc Mormek was good. He was a good cruiserweight champion. Yeah, even like a prime uh, Tabisi Machunu, he would beat a guy like Chris Billum Smith. 
he would beat a guy like Chris Billum Smith. Yeah. I I I agree, Daniel, but I, I'm not sure we ever see Hergovic at his best. You know, certain fighters stick around fighting mediocrity to the point to to the point to where they become stagnant. I, I wonder whether that's happened with um with Hergovic. I wonder whether he stagnated, to be honest with you. I wonder whether he stagnated. I forgot the last time I was genuinely impressed with Hergovic. Again, I could be being harsh, but... Yeah, Moshunu beat Makabu as well, yeah. Uh, Badu Jack has gone to Bridgerweight, I think. I think he's gone to Bridgerweight. So Noel Gevor is now the WBC champion. Oh yeah, no, Tony Bellew would beat Chris Billum Smith. Yeah, no doubt. I don't like Tony Bellew, but he was a decent fighter. He wasn't a bad fighter, Tony Bellew. He wasn't a bad fighter. As much as I disliked him, he was he he had decent fundamentals, Bellew. And decent power. What's up, Larry? How are you doing, bro? Yeah, so people talk about the um, Zhili Zhang fight, but like you said, man, even the Dempsey McKean fight, he wasn't he wasn't impressive. Dempsey McKean's a guy who was a rugby player who started boxing super late, and he fought absolutely nobody before he fought Hergovic. Barely any amateur fights either. And he gave Hergovic a hard fight. I'm not I'm not convinced at all with Hergovic. Not again. It's not that I'm convinced with Dubois either. I, I don't trust either one of them, to be honest. What's up, Mike? How are you doing? Yeah, I agree. This card, this card is great. It's a great card. What do I think is going to steal the show? Um Possibly Ammo Williams versus Hamza Shiraz. That's a really good fight to me. Two unbeaten guys who are unproven but talented going at it. Those fights usually deliver. <clears throat> Hergovic hasn't seemed as energetic ever since 2021, which would correlate to the time people were getting the jibber jabber. Possibly. Possibly. I'd favour Ford. I, I see him as a more versatile fighter, uh, Lee. Ball is good. At, he's good at what he does, as in coming forwards, almost a little Sean Porter-esque in his approach. Raymond Ford, though, in that Kolmutov fight, kind of surprised me. He was trying to box with Kolmutov early on, and he was getting beat. He was getting outworked. And he realised he was losing that fight, no matter what he says on Twitter. He realised he was losing that fight. And he switched it up. He got more aggressive. He started to let his hands go. I liked the adjustment as basic as it was. A lot of fighters don't do that. A lot of fighters just stick to their style, even when they're losing. And they won't try to risk it to get the win. He did He did in that Kolmatov fight. And that impressed me. He showed me he can switch it up. And I think that, that means he can, if he can fight fire with fire with Kolmatov, he can do that against, against Nick Ball, in my opinion. Komatov, for me, is a better fighter than Nick Ball. A more dangerous fighter than Nick Ball. Yeah, Rigan is like 41-42 now. He's still fighting. He fought on, um, I want to say, it like a Don King card recently. I think it was when Broner fought. When Broner fought last, he fought on a Don King card. 
Don't put money on it, Jordan. Don't don't waste your money, son. Don't waste your money. I I I think Garcia is going to get beat convincingly. I don't see I don't see Ryan Garcia since he first sort of broke on the scene, which was what twenty seventeen. People started talking about Ryan. Since then, I've not seen a fighter who's improved. I'll be honest, from a technical perspective, I don't think he's improved at all. I don't think he's improved at all. Still the same raw, um, raw sort of guy he was. He's athletically gifted. He's quick. He hits hard. He's he's a relatively big guy for those weights, but he's so raw, man. So unrefined. Zero boxing IQ. Ryan Garcia has all the raw attributes to be a good fighter. You know, if he was with the right trainer, but more importantly, had the right mindset, he could have been a, a very, well, who knows, but he could he would have been a much better fighter than he is now. Yeah, Rick and Dia lied about his age, probably closer to 60. It's insane, bro. Probably right, though. I thought Vargas would school Ball, but Ball was able to beat him up late by being dirty as fuck. Also, Vasquez did give Ford problems with pressure. That is true. That is true. But again, you can look at that and say, in retrospect, Vasquez kind of proved he was at a certain level against Joe Cordina because he gave Joe Cordina a hard fight. Like, Vasquez is, isn't a bad fighter at all. And you could argue, like, Vasquez versus Isaac Dogbay, who is Ball's best win, you'd probably favour Vasquez to beat Dogbay right now, to be honest. So, so, I don't know. And it goes to show as well, he's had experience against those sort of fighters now, pressure guys, even Kolmatov. And yeah, he has trouble against those guys, like you said, but... He should have learned about those fights. Uh, should have learned uh, uh, from those fights, sorry. Yeah, he, he gives up he gives off a lot of weird vibes, Ryan Garcia. Gives off a lot of weird vibes. Yeah, he could probably he, he can probably hurt Ray Ford. I'm not sure he's got the acumen and intelligence to finish him. Good fight, though. Yeah, too much too young, Ryan Garcia. Could be that as well, but he always struck me as that sort of guy, though. He never struck me as the type of fighter you could sort of bet the house on being a consummate professional, you know? He never struck me as that sort of guy. And here we are, you know? Here we are. But yeah, Ryan Garcia, man. I've not, again, I, as I was saying earlier, I've not paid any attention to that fight whatsoever. Uh, Canelo Munguia prediction. Will Munguia actually come to win? That's the million dollar question. Sven Otke. If he comes to win, I actually think he'll give Canelo a hard fight, believe it or not. I actually think he'll give him a hard fight. If he comes to win and comes to fight, he will give Canelo a hard time. Just just by uh, just on just based on volume. But is he coming to win? Is the question. Answers on a postcard. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, Garcia cares more about social media. And getting laid than boxing, yeah. So did, yeah, so did, uh, so did I. Let me ace. I thought Ford beat. Sorry, I thought Ford lost to Vasquez as well. Yeah, he's very gangly. He's very gangly, uh, Ray Vargas. He can't fight on the inside. Yeah. Yeah, they've got a good card uh, coming up. 
they're trying to make Boatsy yard. And I think that's going to be on the card with Riakpo and Billam Smith. That's what I heard anyway. That could be good. Yeah, Henry, I'm good, man. I'm good. No, I didn't do a recap, but I thought Lemos won. I thought Lemos won, Henry. I thought Lemos beat him. Uh, for me, Hitchens wasn't effective in his approach. Lemos landed a significant amount, uh, sorry, significantly more power shots than uh, than Hitchens. He hurt Hitchens at least three times in that fight. Hitchens was holding, he was fouling. For me, for me, Lemos won that fight. People talk about effectiveness. I don't see how anybody can watch that fight and say Lemos's aggression was less effective than uh, Hitchens' uh, excessive movement. Lemos was more effective in that fight with his approach. He was the guy who stunned his opponent's uh, opponent three times. His opponent resorted to fouling and holding and, and, and excessive clinching against the rules. When you when you when you're uh, resorting to like excessive clinching and things like that, it means the other guy's presence is getting to you. Therefore, he's being more effective. But yeah, I thought Lemos I thought Lemos beat Hitchens to be honest. <clears throat> Yeah, that's one thing about Haney. Uh, he he is quite active for like a high profile fighter in this day and age. He is quite active, and that definitely helps him. Uh, but how would he do against Matthias? Listen, I'd I'd hope Matthias beats him. Not sure, but I'd hope Matthias beats him. Yeah. Yeah, I felt sorry for Lemos, man. I felt sorry for him. Yeah, plus people people forget this fact as well. Lemos was a guy coming up from lightweight. Because he beat Lee Selby at lightweight in a title eliminator. He knocked out Selby in Argentina. That was a IBF title eliminator. And then he went to 140. Yeah, and Hitchens was like 5'10". 5'11", whereas Lemos was 5'5", five five or something like that. Massive size advantage, and he's still lost. Still lost, in my opinion. But what do I know? Yeah, Tio's dad's another one. Haney's dad, Tio's dad. Yeah, both annoying as hell. Most of these guys in boxing, though, these father-son combos are cringe. Most of them are cringe, bro. And they usually end badly as well. They usually end in tears. Yeah, Angel Garcia. When, when Danny Garcia was coming up, when Danny Garcia was in his prime... Angel Garcia was kind of funny. Him and the uh, Amir Khan build-up was hilarious. And also uh, the Zab Judah build-up as well. Like, he would do the talking for his son, basically. But Angel Garcia, one thing about Angel Garcia, he actually got in opponents' heads. Like, he got in Amir Khan's head. He definitely got in, uh, in Amir Khan's head. So at least Angel Garcia had an element of effectiveness with him, with his approach. As annoying as he was, as annoying as he was, he got in Zab Judah's head. He got in Amir Khan's head. And also... Um, I feel like Angel Garcia's relationship with Danny, it does feel a lot more human, kind of. It's hard to explain.
in real fights, no one beats Matthias at 140. I think he's a very, very hard opponent for anybody at 140. I think he'd beat Isaac Cruz. Haney's interesting. Haney would evade him for a while, but doing it for 12 rounds will be very hard. Tio. One thing about Tio is he has power. He has power. So it's whether it's whether Tio could get his respect. If he can't, I think Matthias beats Tio. Yeah, that's that's what I sense as well, Sven. That's what I sense as well with Angel Garcia. I feel like as well with um, Bill Haney and Tio Senior, their acts or how they come across, they, they feel like an act. Whereas Angel Garcia just came across that way, like that was genuinely him, some crazy fucking street dude from Philadelphia. I just felt, I just felt Angel Garcia, as, as much as like people didn't like him, I felt he was more authentic. Um, Liam Parrow is a good fighter. He's a decent fighter. But we've seen Matthias fight these guys previously. So unheralded, but good unbeaten guys. We've we've seen Matthias take these sort of fights. You know, guys like Ergashev, uh, Jeremias Ponce, etc. Malik Hawkins, these sort of guys. Unknown, but unbeaten, but good. We've seen Matthias take these fights before, and... They've all gone a similar way. I look at Liam Parrow. He's good. He's solid. He's decent. He's sneaky. Okay power, but I don't see... I just don't see him having enough to beat Matthias, to be honest with you. Yeah, it looked good, bro. It looked good on TV. It looked good. I watched, well, on YouTube, sorry. I watched it live. Did you get any interviews, G-Man? Yeah, Tio's dad just sees his son as a way to get in the spotlight, similar to John Fury. I agree, yeah. It's like when Danny doesn't fight, you don't really hear Angel Garcia. You don't really see him. Whereas guys like Bill Haney and fucking Tio Senior, they're on like every fucking YouTube channel and shit. I forgot about Antoine Russell, Daniel. I forgot about him. He's not fought in so long. I don't think Jose Ramirez does at this point, to be honest. I think he's on the way out. That's crazy, G-Man. That's crazy. Because you would get good views on interviews. You would get good views. Yeah, it's a hell of a card, Joe. Hell of a card. I was thinking about the fights on that card. I'm pretty certain in Bivol Baterbiev. My pick is pretty locked in for that one. I've got Baterbiev by stoppage late, but I don't think it's going to be as competitive as people think it will be. Wilder versus Zhang. I, I edged towards Zhang, but I wouldn't be shocked if Wilder pulled it out. Dubois Hergovic. Funnily enough, I find hard to call. Ammo Williams versus Hamza Shiraz, to me, may be the show stealer. Two unbeaten guys, middleweights, somewhat unproven, but have shown good qualities going at it. I find that fight very hard to call. I find that one in particular very hard to call. That might be the show stealer. That could be the show stealer. Austin Williams versus... Hamza Shiraz. And aside from that, you've got Nick Ball, Ray Ford. Good fight, but I'm pretty confident in, in Raymond Ford. And obviously, Craig Richards and Willie Hutchinson. I think Craig Richards beats Hutchinson. Oh, they gave you free shit. Nice, 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 nice. So you got a free meal. Good. 
Yeah, L- Lomachenko is going to go through Cambosos like a doorway. Not really fussed about that fight. I'll watch it, but yeah, Cambosos doesn't interest me at all. I've always said it about Cambosos. I, I think the guy's been overrated, personally. Yeah, that's the one I find hardest to call, G-Man. I, I'm kind of unsure on that one. Shout out to his excellent, excellent, uh, excellency, Turkey Al based. Yep, big up to Turkey. Ford versus Ball and Shiraz versus Ammo are the two picks for me, yeah. If I had to pick a show stealer, it'd be Shiraz versus Ammo. I think Shiraz KOs Williams mid-rounds. He could. Like I was saying earlier, he's got a good knack of finding his distance and catching guys right on the end of his punches. He generates full force in that straight right in particular, even his jab. But if Ammo, if Ammo gets on his chest and works that body... That, that tall, lanky body of uh, Hamza Shiraz could be interesting. I was saying earlier, Ammo Williams reminds me stylistically of Errol Spence a bit. Not saying he's as good as a prime Spence, but stylistically I see a similarity there. Yeah, I think so as well. Cambosos is decent, but he's not the level that people were saying he was, in my opinion. Yep, I agree. I think Wilder versus Zhang is going to be a don't-blink fight. You might see four rounds of nothing, honestly. Pity-patting and pouring and posturing until somebody pulls the trigger. <clears throat> and that that fight may simply be who pulls the trigger first. Could be that sort of fight. It could really be that sort of fight. George Arias versus Skylar Lacey. Nah, bro. I remember George Arias, though. He was getting hyped at one point in time a few years ago. I never rated him, personally. I've never seen Skylar Lacey fight before. That's a great question. They best. I hope they're 12-rounders. I hope they're 12-rounders. They must be 12-rounders, right? Because one's a world title fight. It says on BoxRec that uh, they're all 12-rounders. It's, yeah, it says on BoxRec that all 12 rounders. That's a, nah, don't don't jinx it, cop end. Don't jinx it. Which fighter is, is the most likely to pull out? Well, there's five... Well, there's six fights on the card, so it's very possible that somebody pulls out. Let's hope, let's hope it's not the main event. If anybody pulls out, I hope it's like the Craig Richards... Hutchinson fight. That's what I was saying, Sven. If um, I, I've got more faith in, in Zhang taking a few power shots than Wilder. So if Zhang pulls the trigger first, I, I, I think he wins. If he pulls the trigger first. Whereas Wilder could pull the trigger first. He could knock out Zhang. But I think Zhang's got a better possibility of taking the shot. Or a few shots at least. Yeah, that's true. That's true, Joe. But like, I swear the last Saudi card started at like five or something, right? It started quite early. It started quite early, the Joshua and Ganu card. Let me go back to the Joshua and Ganu card quickly. How many 12 rounders were on there? One second. They just have to get the turnaround times a bit quicker. So on the Joshua and Garnu card, there was one, two, three. There was only three 12 rounders. This has got six. But, but, there was uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 
nine, ten fights on the other card, though. So I think they could do it. They could do it, I think. They could do it. No, I didn't see the Angelo Leo fight. I, I didn't see it. I know he won. I know he won. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I think I think Richards beats Hutchinson. I don't I don't I don't really rate Hutchinson that highly, whereas I know Richards is a very tough domestic light heavyweight. Even when he stepped above domestic level, he's lost against Boatsi, who is what, fringe world level, and B Roll, who is world level. He lost those fights clearly, but he looked after himself. He's he's a tough campaigner. And against a guy like Willie Hutchinson, I favour him. Yeah, true, true, Matt. Yeah, the big paydays is going to be a reason not to pull out. Yeah, hopefully they don't. Honestly, hopefully they don't. They don't have many. They don't have too many prelims. Sorry. Yeah, I'd rather Caballel win. To be honest, I'd rather Caballel beat Sanchez. Frank Sanchez is negative, like you were saying. He has moments. He has moments where he shows bursts of like uh, quality, but it's too few and far in between, in my opinion. Yeah, Pro Box Daniel are doing some good work. They're doing some good work. Oh, you've got you've got Baturbiev early. I think he'll win that fight quite comfortably, but I don't think he'll do it early. I'd be very... Would I be... Sh I'd be a bit surprised if he does it early. I wouldn't be, like, shocked, shocked, but I'd be I'd be a bit surprised. I'd be a bit surprised. Yeah, it's funny, yeah. So Brandon Adams is back in action on Friday. He brutally knocked out Sergei Boachuk in his last fight, who is now the interim champion. Yep. It's crazy how boxing works. Like, after that, I thought he was done. I'll be honest. Not that he lost a fight, right? I get fighters can lose a fight. But losing a fight to Brandon Adams, who isn't a big puncher, how he got knocked out, I'm kind of impressed with how he's come back. I'm not going to lie. I'm kind of impressed with how he's come back. Because I half expected Brian Mendoza to chin him. I, I half expected Mendoza to, to knock him out. To be honest with you. Yeah, I'd say last sort of three rounds. 10, 10 11 or 12. I actually think Fury Usyk will be a cagey draw. I can see it being a cagey fight. I can see it being a messy fight as well. I can see it being a messy fight. One sec. Yeah, he seemed a bit. He seemed a bit wavy. He seemed a bit wavy at the uh, press conference, Deontay. <clears throat> no, no, no. I didn't see the Angelo Leo fight. I did. I didn't see it. Who do you think the politics favour in B Roll Baturbiev, if anybody? Um, it's a good question. Baturbiev, maybe. It being in a Muslim country, that's the only, that's the only angle I can see there. And also, he's more exciting for Turbiev. Plus, that Turkey Ala Sheikhs mentioned Turbiev versus Opatia as well. Or maybe Bivol to set up a Canelo rematch, yeah. 
I agree, Sven, but people are not willing to have that conversation when it comes to Bebo. Like, I was very critical of his performance over Lyndon Arthur. And so many people defending this guy for, like, carrying a bum. It, I mean, in comparison to, to world level, if you're a world level light heavyweight, you should be stopping Lyndon Arthur. And not doing so is a bad look. I'm sorry, it's a bad look. But people were just defending this guy. For, for putting on that dull display. Like you said, could put a glass eye to sleep in many fights. Yeah, Yvan Mendy also fought for a European, uh, European title not that long ago against um, Dennis Berinczyk. That wasn't that long ago. And he gave Berinczyk a pretty good fight, from what I remember. Yeah, Yvan Mendy's tough. He's tough. And that's a hard fight for Sam Noakes. It's a hard fight. Even though Yvan Mendy is in his mid-30s now, I would say. Yeah, it did look like that. It looked like he got buzzed to the body. Moment, momentarily. <clears throat> it looks like he got hurt to the body. Yeah, I think Paterbiev will make it a good fight, uh, Jordan. I think Paterbiev makes it a good fight. Okay. One second, guys. I'm just doing some shit in the background here. But yeah, that's a card I'll definitely sit down for. Uh, make sure I'm like totally free, nothing to do. And I'm going to kick back, get some beers in, get a takeaway in, and just enjoy it, I think. It's going to be one of those cards where I won't, I won't move for like six hours for when that card is on. That's a card you sort of kick back, you you plan around it. There's very few cards like that in boxing now, very few fights in boxing these days where I will sort of plan my day around it. Very rare that happens these days. Back in the day, I used to make time for boxing, but not so much these days. But I will, I will for that card. I will. I will. Yeah. Mendy's tough and skilled, though. Yeah, very, very durable guy as well. Very good shit. Hard. Does for basics well. He's been around forever, like you're saying. Yeah, beat Luke Campbell about 10 years ago as well, which is crazy. He stuck around for a long time and maintained his level as well. He's been at European level ever since then, really. Thing is, though, like, while they're getting another major fight, it's stealing away opportunities from other more deserving fighters. It doesn't speak well for the current state of the heavyweight division. Nobody wants to see Wilder. I would disagree. Regardless of where Wilder's at, people are going to watch the guy fight because a lot of people want to see him get knocked out again. Let's be honest. Who else would you... Aside from Anthony Joshua, who else would you have rather seen uh, Zhili Zhang fight considering what's out there? I mean, I wouldn't want to see a Parker rematch. I wouldn't really want to see a Hergovic rematch because he's fighting Dubois. Dubois fighting Hergovic. He's beat Joyce twice. Caballero's fighting Sanchez. Who else is there? And it's it's because I mean, like Sven is saying, the heavyweight division just isn't that deep. You can be in a position like Deontay Wilder and still get a big fight. You can you can be in a position of Andy Ruiz not having fought in two years and get a big fight. That's just that's just the way the heavyweight division is right now. There's not many like big names or or uh, credible contenders outside the champions. It's not a deep division. I I like the fight personally. I like it, but maybe I'm easily pleased.
Maybe I'm easily pleased. Value of the great versus prime to Zora. Uh, value of on points, I'd say. Exactly, bro. Like, uh, and, and I think somebody will get knocked out in that fight. I think somebody will get knocked out in that fight. So it's going to, it's, I think it will deliver from that perspective. Someone's getting knocked out. Yeah. Yeah, Peter McGrail's now fighting Mark Leach. Yeah, he was gonna he was gonna rematch O'Quinn. Yeah, he was winning that first fight, but O'Quinn just caught him and 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 he never recovered. Bring Lewis Ortiz from his ancient grave, and also speaking of heavyweights, this is another fucking reason, right? Bakadir Jalalov, this guy, this guy. He was supposed to fight on the Fury undercard, Fury Usyk undercard. It's now it's now no longer happening because he's going to fight in another Olympics. Why? You're a pro heavyweight. You've won the Olympic gold before. Why? Why? Fucking, it's a joke. The Dev Dev Sani is a fucking. He's like something out of the office. He's like something out of a Ricky Gervais fucking program. Honestly, he's like a parody, that guy. He's like a parody. He seems like a nice guy, though, I'll be honest. He, he, he does seem like a nice guy, but... Bro, how he got that gig, I've got no idea. Yeah. Because there was rumours he was going to fight Lewis Ortiz. But I have to be honest, I'm getting a bit annoyed with, with Jalalov now. I'm getting a bit annoyed with him. He's nearly 30. What is he, 29? He, he be and by the way, he best fucking win those, Olymp he best win those Olympics. If he's going to go back in there as a pro, he best fucking win those Olympics. If he doesn't, He's wasted wasted his fucking time when he should have been fighting pro. He best win those Olympics. Yeah, I noticed that. Yeah, he gave away Nick Ball being in the uh, 5v5 because Eddie Eddie mentioned he was one of his favourite fighters. Yeah, just amateur. It's amateur hour. It's amateur hour, honestly. Yeah, that's how he comes across, basically. The stereotypical corporate ass kisser. Yep. Yeah. Jalalov versus Cheney would do May 18th, but I don't think they wanted to risk it. Yeah, I'm I'm getting tired of Jalalov. I think he's talented, but like I like I was saying, if he goes back into the Olympics and doesn't win gold, it's a waste of time. It's a waste of time. Maybe maybe him winning like two gold medals. Maybe he feels that will make him more marketable, but I mean, the first gold medal didn't really help, did it? Nobody's really talking about Jalalov, aside from us like super hardcore boxing fans. What's another gold medal going to do? It's a good talking point, but he's also wasting a lot of time developing as a pro. And I'll say it now, when this guy gets exposed, we'll say, oh, he, t he stayed amateur too long. Yeah, the guy he beat was George Ori. 
who used to be a European champion. Yeah, I saw bits of that fight. I saw bits and bobs. I didn't watch the whole fight, but yeah. He was in he was inactive for a long time due to uh promotional issues. But he was an okay boxer, Charlie Edwards back in the day. Not not as good as Sonny. Speaking of that, Sonny Edwards is fighting soon. He's fighting um, Adrian Curiel on the undercard of Estrada Bam, uh, Bam Rodriguez. That's a decent fight for Sonny Edwards to come back to. It's not like a gimme fight. Not a big fan of Sonny Edwards, but I, I respect the fact that he's taking good fights. I'll, I'll give him that credit. He doesn't seem like the type of guy to be wanting easy fights. He's asking for hard fights, so I'll give Sonny Edwards that credit. Curiel's good. Curiel, he lost his last bout, I believe, against the um, South African. But I think it'll be a hard fight, but I think Sonny wins. Nah, nah, not right now. Apology, not right now. Maybe, maybe. I don't. I don't know the deal with Jalen Love, man. I don't. I don't. I don't get it. I don't get it. To be honest with you, I'm just becoming a little impatient, waiting for this guy to do something. I'm getting a little impatient with it. To be honest with you. It's all well and good us. It's all well and good us like bigging him up and saying he's this super talent, but and he is talented. He is talented, but you gotta get a move on, man. You gotta get a move on. And like somebody was saying earlier in the chat, it's not like he's going back to a super heavyweight division in the Olymp in the amateur ranks. That's super dangerous or super good. Super super stacked. It's not really that stacked right now. Super heavyweight. It's not really that stacked. So what's the point going back? Like the class where he won the heavyweight gold was probably stronger then, honestly. But, you know, it is what it is. Joe Joyce stayed amateur too long, only to get robbed in the Olympics. May as well turn pro in 2012 or 2013. Maybe, maybe, but like, you know, Joe, Joe started late as well. He started boxing at, what, 22, maybe? So I could understand him stay, to, uh, staying amateur longer. Yeah, I saw, the, I saw some highlights for, the, uh, for that fight, yeah. Yeah, Walters beat Aderno, who is a decent gatekeeper. But yeah, a good win for Walters, considering uh, like five years out of the ring, whatever it's been. Mm. I agree, bro. I agree, um, let me ace. I totally agree. By this point in time, we should have seen Jalalov fight those kind of mid-tier heavyweights, the gatekeeper types. And now he should be getting into the stage where he's in the mix with the likes of Frank Sanchez or Caballel, those sort of guys. Who's more of a corporate lick spittle? I like that word. Dev Sarni or Gareth A. Davis? I find Gareth A. Davis more unpalatable, I would say. There's something about Gareth A. Davis that really gets under my skin. Whereas Dev Sarni, yeah, he's an annoyance, but he can be he can be funny. I don't think he comes across as a bad guy. Whereas Gareth A. Davis, like, it's just intuition, but I wouldn't trust that guy as far as I could throw him, to be honest with you. There's something about that guy that doesn't sit right with me, to be honest.
And he's supposed to be an independent, right, as well. Like, it's, it's not exactly like Dev Sani is supposed to be an independent. He works for Queensbury or BT, whatever, TNT. Yeah, Gareth is creepy. Dev is just cringe. Yeah, Dev outside of boxing is probably a nice guy. Yeah, he's the um, TNT guy or Frank Warren guy. He's basically their version of who would you say? I would say Tony Bellew. He's like he's like a cheerleader for Queensbury, basically. He's like that. He is basically like their Tony Bellew. I I may make a prediction, but I favour Raymond Ford against Nick Ball. I, I, I just see him as a more versatile fighter. Like I was saying earlier, Nick Ball is good at what he does. And, and he makes for most of his physical disadvantages and turns them into advantages. But he fights one way, primarily. Raymond Ford in that Colmato fight showed me he can, he can switch it up when things get tough. I value that quite a lot. Like he was boxing with Colmato and was losing. He was getting outworked and, and, get, and getting beat. But he switched up late, he he put the pressure on, and he got the job done. I I liked that tactical adjustment. I liked the fact that he turned he turned it up and, and put shots together and went for it. I know that's a A lot of fighters don't. A lot of fighters just stick to what they're doing and they won't make that change. They won't take that risk. But he did and and it paid off for him. I I, I rate that adjustment. And I think he can fight fire with fire with, with Nick Ball if he has to. And when he's not, I think he'll be outboxing Nick Ball. I think Nick Ball has to hurt Ray Ford to win that fight. Yes, it's a decent fight. Maestra, Mike, Gabriel Maestra is a decent fighter. But again, he's old as well. He turned pro very late. He's Venezuelan. Good amateur, but yeah, I got Stanny Onis. Yeah, Davies writes for the Telegraph. Yeah, says a lot. Yeah, he smacks of someone who quite likes boxing, but got a broadsheet gig because he studied journalism jur uh, journalism at college and speaks with with middle class tones. Yeah, basically, yeah. Uh, Mario Barrios will beat Fabian Maidana. I forgot Fabian Maidana was even fighting still. He's Maidana's brother, Marcus Maidana's brother. He's lost a couple times, uh, Fabian Maidana, against lesser guys. So I expect Mario Barrios to win that fight. I expect Mario Barrios to win. And yeah, Bellew's worse than Dev Sarni. I find Bellew more jarring. Bro, Chelsea won 6 0 against Everton. Where did that come from? It's crazy. Cole Palmer got four goals. That's crazy. insane. Swear to God, Chelsea are like the most bipolar team. Yeah, big up Joe Stunner. Check him out, by the way. He's got a very good channel. Very good channel. And what's up, JD? How are you doing? Yeah, Bentley really surprised me in a bad way against Nathan Heaney. <clears throat> I'll be honest, he really surprised me in a bad way. I, I expected him to beat Nathan Heaney comfortably. But yeah, he uh, he shit the bed that night and got outboxed. 
That really surprised me. That Nathan Heaney fight. It was like it was like Denzel Bentley was sleepwalking in that fight. It's a strange fight. Strange, strange fight. I don't know whether I don't know whether um, Denzel Bentley had a hard time making weight or something. That's strange. Yeah, football's not as good as it was, Sven. It's not as good as it was. The only time I really kind of re like really get into it is like World Cups and, and European Championships, to be honest, these days. Yeah, Stanionis Maestra is the only fight worth noting for me, at least. I believe it will be interesting to see where Stanionis is at after two years out of the ring. And it's against a guy that has had some tough fights, yeah. And he was, like I was saying, he was a good amateur, Maestre. So weird how Bentley froze against Heaney, but was fine against Janabek. Well, I saw some people say they they uh, felt he threw the fight, Denzel Bentley. And I can see why. There, there were times when, like, he was throwing when it made no logical sense to throw a punch. Like, he was so far out of range, it was never going to land. It looks it looks strange that fight. I have to admit, if any if any of you have seen that fight, Nathan Heaney versus Denzel Bentley, am I the only one who felt in hindsight that fight looked very strange? Especially considering the last fight Heaney had, where he looked very human. He drew against Brad Paul, I think his name was. It could be a it could be a who lands first. It could be a who lands first, JD. That's why I like the fight. Uh Cordina. Oh shit. I got my fucking shit on full screen. How do I get out of this shit? Hang on. There you go. Um yeah, I've got Cordina. Kakache is a decent fighter out of Ireland. European level, I would say, but I think Cordina's a level above. I know Cordina didn't look good in his last fight against Edward Vasquez, but I, I'd expect Cordina to... I'd expect him to beat Kakache. Yeah, that is that is cringe, yeah, when football chants make, make their way into boxing. Yeah, that is cringe. Yeah, maybe maybe he just overlooked Nathan Heaney because I think a lot of people going into that fight expected him to knock out Heaney. Because he, he was definitely off, though. He was definitely off. It's not the same guy I saw beating Mark Heffron or even giving Yanabek some decent moments. Yeah, <clears throat> it was a strange fight. That's all I'll say. It was a strange fight. I can see why people question it, put it that way. Yeah, but the, I mean, <clears throat> are any of those guys 12-round fighters now, JD? Wilder Rozang? I never watched it, uh, Paul. I never watched that Tyson Fury press conference. It was strange, a one-man press conference. Oh, yeah, so Mark Heffron's going out to, to Canada to fight Christian and Bealy. Yeah, I saw that as well. Yeah, I think that's going to end one way, to be honest with you. Christian and Bealy's another one who I quite like him. He's, a, he's an entertaining guy, but we're, we're getting to the stage now where it's like, when when's the step up? When's the step up? You know, when's, when's he going to fight that sort of top sort of six, seven, eight level guy? Carlos Gungora was a good opponent when he fought him. But we need a step up.
really what would be nice if he were to fight a guy like David Morell. That'd be a great fight. That'd be a great fight. Biggest overachiever in boxing. Um... <sighs> In recent years, I'm going to stick it to, I'm going to keep it recent years. And I'm going to try, I'm going to try and judge it <clears throat> from when I, when I first saw the fighter to where they ended up. I'd say Lee Wood is up there. I'd say Lee Wood is up there for a big overachiever. Because I always saw Lee Wood as a, a banger at domestic level who was suspect around the whiskers, and nothing more than that. What he's gone on to do is pretty remarkable, to be honest. <clears throat> um, I'd probably say Badu Jack is another one. So I, I followed this guy before he was a world champion, when he was fighting on like Mayweather undercards and those Mayweather cards on a Thursday night in Las Vegas. And he never impressed me. He had a really close fight with... Um, Marco Antonio Paraban. I think it was Paraban. He got knocked out by Derek Edwards in one round. And after that point, I thought he was done. He just looked like a basic fighter, but he came back from there, won a super middleweight title, should have beat James DeGale as well, in my opinion. I felt he got jobbed in that fight. Got a, <clears throat> got a version of a light heavyweight title, albeit a WBA regular. Then, run, then won a cruiserweight title. I'd say Badu Jack is up there for overachievers. I'd say, I'd say Badu Jack's up there <clears throat> with overachievers. Badu Jack's up there. Lee Wood's up there. Who else could I say? Who else could I say? They're the two that come to mind right now. <laughs> Roly Romero is the biggest overachiever. He's an absolute bum and become a world champion, even if it was due to corruption. That's a shout. That's a shout. Yeah, Mbili's fun to watch, but there are too many flaws. David Morrell would obliterate him. Mbili walks in the front door slinging hooks and is way too open. Yeah, I agree. I agree, to be honest. I mean, that's a shout because when he when he first came to America... Like he was supposed to, he was supposed to lose to uh, Ledwaba. Le like Jim Lampley had no idea who this guy was. Nobody had no idea who this guy was. And even when he first started to make noise, oh, he's just a left hand. He's just a left hand. And the years passed. The years passed. More weight classes. More weight classes. Nobody could have predicted that about Manny Pacquiao. Nobody. So yeah, Manny Pacquiao. I think anybody who becomes an eight-weight world champion, eight-division world champion, is an overachiever because that is not normal. It's, it's extraordinary. Ricky Burns is a good shout as well. Ricky Burns, yeah, that's a good shout. Manuel Char. Yeah, Darren Barker, yeah, beating Felix Stern. Speaking of middleweights, I guess you could say Sergio Martinez, considering he started boxing at 21, never boxed until he was 21 years old, and he became a middleweight champion, a pound-for-pound -pound fighter. You could say Sergio Martinez was an overachiever. You know, he lost an early fight to Antonio Margarito. Yeah, I'm interested. I'm I'm actually interested to see what Kovalev looks like against uh, Robin Siwan, who's unbeaten, but he's never fought anybody, this Siwan guy. So we'll see how, how Kovalev looks. He could fight for a cruiserweight title. You never know. If he beats that guy, you could see Kovalev fight for a, for a cruiserweight title. And you look at cruiserweight right now. We was talking about this earlier. So Chris Billum-Smith, he's fighting Richard Riakpour. 
But Kovalev, I'd give Kovalev, if it's the same Kovalev from the Tervel Pulev fight, I'd give him a chance to beat Chris Willem Smith. And even Noel Givor, I would give Kovalev a chance if it's the same Kovalev from the um, Tervel Pulev fight. Yeah, Wilder is another example. You could say Wilder is an overachiever. Even though, yeah, we'll say he had like the A side politics, but even then, like for a guy that limited, good. For, uh, that's an interesting fight. A Jagba versus Anderson. I'd like to see it, but I don't think top rank are going to risk it just yet. I know a Jagba's nothing special, but Jared Anderson leaves a lot of openings, man. And a Jagba, for all his flaws, can punch. He can punch. Yeah, that, that rematch with Koto, a lot of people ignore certain factors about that fight. That rematch. They they forget, like, if you, if you watch that fight back, Miguel Koto was starting to get tired again. He was starting to get tired again, like he did in the first fight. He was starting to mark up. And one noticeable difference about that second fight, one sorry, one noticeable difference in that second fight was... Margarito and Koto were fighting in 10-ounce gloves, I believe, in that rematch. Whereas in the first fight, they was fighting in 8-ounce. So Margarito kind of got fucked in that Koto rematch. <clears throat> people need to watch that fight. I feel like that's one of those fights where a lot of people never saw it. And they assumed it was heading one way, but I don't know. I've always wanted to make a video on the Margarito situation because a lot of that's a much ado about nothing, to be honest. Like, there are people out there who still believe he had plaster blocks in his gloves. If that was the case, he'd be in fucking prison. He never he never had plaster blocks in his gloves. But that's a that's a different story for a different day. I'd have to make a like a a concise video on it and find the sources. Because a lot of these sources are like 10 years old or so. So going back and finding them, it's not easy. It's not always easy. That's another one, Fabio Wardley, yeah. White collar background, Fabio Wardley's already overachieved, I agree. And he's got a lot, he's got a lot better natural instincts than a lot of boxers who have done it a lot longer. Yeah. Yeah, they stacked the deck in the rematch with Koto. They they stacked the deck. <clears throat> Best boxer from Luton. So we had we had Graham Earl who fought he fought um Michael Katsidis in that classic fight on I on ITV4. Graham Earl versus Michael Katsidis. If you haven't seen it, watch it. It was a great fight. Great, great fight. I remember staying up to watch that fight. Not, no, not staying up, because it was a UK fight. But And I, used, I was just so enthralled with what I was watching. I was young as well. I must have been, I don't know how old I was, but ten, like 11, 12, something like that. 13, whatever. And that was such a good fight. And years later, I trained at his gym. So he had a gym, not in Luton, but a place kind of near Luton. A bit a bit away from Luton, to be honest. But he had a gym, which was okay. But it got shut down because he got sent down for drug trafficking, I believe. He got, he got sent down for drug trafficking. But I, I met him quite a few times in the gym. And yeah, at the end, he was like super punchy, super punchy. Like, really punchy. 
Bermain Stubborn, biggest overachiever. Never trained once for 10 plus years while remaining active and even became a world champion thanks to Don King. Yeah. Yo, do you guys do you guys remember when Bermain Stubborn became champion? And there was this like select group on YouTube and like online boxing scenes who actually felt Stubborn could beat Vladimir Klitschko. It's crazy. I heard a theory that Earl Katsidis 2 never happened. The fight is on box rec, but there is no footage anywhere. Really? I forgot. I, I recall that fight actually happening again. I, re I remember it being scheduled years ago. Are there any pictures? There's not even any pictures of it. That's crazy. Billy Schwer was from Luton Commonwealth. And EBU champion, yeah. We um we also had well we also have Linus Adofia, who's a decent domestic middleweight. A town over in Bedford, we had Matt Skelton, who was a he was a British heavyweight champion. I think he won the European as well, Matt Skelton. I'm sure he won the European as well, and also he fought Shagayev for the WBA title. I've bu I've bumped into Matt Skelton a few times. Uh, around Bedford, and he's um, uh, he had a gym in Bedford as well for a while, and he was actually a he was actually a nice guy, Matt Skelton, a uh, good guy, but he was a decent domestic fighter back in the day. He's uh, from near me as well, and Skelton fought in Muay Thai as well before boxing. He even had a fight in Pride MMA, believe it or not. But he, he he had a good career considering he came over from kickboxing. He had a good career. Hung around too long uh, too long at the end. You know, when he came back and fought guys like Joshua, like there was no need for it, but he was a messy fighter though, Matt Skelton. He was a, just a horrible kind of get on your chest type of fighter. But he picked up a couple of good wins in his career. He got he beat guys like Michael Sprott. He beat Danny Williams, I think. I think he beat Danny Williams. I know he beat John McDermott. But considering he had a decent career, Matt Skelton. He had a decent career. Yeah, I've been looking on and off uh, for pictures, videos, or any accounts of it. Yeah, very unusual, yeah. Yeah, he fought Amir Khan as well, Graham L. He fought Amir Khan. Yeah, Shagayev Skelton was a good fight. Shagayev won clearly, but it was close and competitive. Yeah, yeah. Skelton in those days was a was a tough guy. Yeah, Danny Danny Williams fought Batali. Yeah, he got he got smashed up. Yeah. Rosansky versus Akole, interesting fight. Rosansky's 38, but has wins over Izuagano, Spielka, and Babish for whatever that's worth. Yeah. I've seen I've seen a bit of Rosansky because I picked him to beat Babish. I know that's not exactly Nostradamus, but people are some people picked Babish to beat him. 
believe it or not. Um, Rosansky's got deceptively quick hands. He, he's got good power. He can put his shots together, but he is very basic. Doesn't look the part either. He, he, he's a little like Andy Ruiz in that sense. His hands are faster than you expect. And he's dangerous up close, but you would expect a Kole to win, but away away on foreign soil, hostile Polish atmosphere, maybe a harder fight than people expect. It may, may be a harder fight than people expect. Yeah, Danny, Danny is still fighting, uh, last I checked. Danny Williams has been fighting on and off for forever. Let's ha uh, yeah, let's have a look. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He last fought in um, Estonia, I believe. He last fought in in uh, in Estonia. Yeah, in August of last year. Fifty years old. Fifty-five wins, thirty-three defeats, seventeen defeats by knockout. His career started in nineteen ninety-five, and we're now in twenty twenty-four. Last fight in twenty twenty-three. So there you go. If he fights once next year, his career would have lasted thirty years. It's crazy. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure what state Danny Williams is in because I've not heard any interviews from him at all. Or like maybe he's maybe he sounds better than we expect. Maybe maybe he sounds better than we expect. I don't know. I don't know. Some some guys are anonym, uh, anomalies like that, where they have these crazy long careers where they go on too long. But they are they they are relatively unscathed. Maybe he's one of those guys. I've not I've not heard him for years. Danny Williams. I, I don't know what state he's in. But he was another good domestic fighter though back in the day. He was another good domestic fighter back then. Like tough tough guy again. Tough tough guy. Like just a very tough tough guy. Yeah, exactly. George Foreman took a lot of punishment, but is still very sharp. Yeah, he is indeed. Still speaks very well. He's done very well outside of boxing. Yeah, first recorded amateur fight for Danny Williams was 1992. So that's 32 years. He sounds like James Tony or on Jack Daniels in an interview I heard from a few years back. Okay, so he sounds bad. Okay, so Spencer Fearon said that Danny Williams is absolutely mashed. Memory's gone and everything. Okay, that's sad. How is he still getting licensed, man? That's the crazy thing. How is he still getting licensed? But yeah, that domestic scene back in the day with like, Danny Williams, Matt Skelton, Michael Sprott, Audley Harrison, Martin Rogan, John McDermott. They weren't great fighters, but they were they were just tough, tough fuckers who who took lumps out of each other. Are people underrating Berenchik in the Navarrete fight? Can he pull it off? I'm hearing people pick Berenchik by KO or TKO. I just think he'll be outworked, bro. Hand history vault. I just think he'll be outworked. He's a good fighter, Berenchik. He's a good fighter. Who, in my opinion, doesn't really have any exceptional attributes. I think he'll make the distance. I don't think he'll get knocked out. I think he'll be outworked by Navarrete.
Does anybody think top rank would actually put Anderson in the ring with Makhmadov? I don't see why not. I don't see why not. <laughs> Danny Williams versus Bernard Hopkins in 2024. Yeah, that is a great knockout against uh, Mark Potter. Yeah, Mark Potter. I think Mark Potter died recently as well. I think he died recently, Mark Potter. I could be wrong on that. Yeah, yeah, those those guys made for good fights, bro. Yeah, yeah, albeit at domestic level, but they made for good fights. They made for good fights. And yeah, the heavyweight prize fighters were always my favorite. I loved, see, I loved prize fighter. A lot of hardcore boxing fans always used to turn their nose up at prize fighter. I quite liked it, to be honest. I liked it in the sense that I felt it was a good way to kickstart fighters' careers who weren't known, like guys who didn't have like crazy amateur backgrounds or they weren't one of the chosen ones. It was a good way to launch careers, like. It launched Martin Murray's career, <clears throat> Price Fighter. Because off, off the back of Price Fighter, he had a good career. Fernando Martinez versus Kazuta Ioka. Is that official? Is that official? I take Ioka, but it's a good fight. It's a good fight. Martinez is no mug. And quite frankly, Ma uh, Ioka is 35 now. Ioka's 35. And like Joshua Franco gave him a hard fight. And Franco's not like amazing. I don't know. I'm, I'm taking Ioka... I'm taking the Oka, but I wouldn't be shocked if there's an upset. I wouldn't be shocked, but I'm, ta I'm taking the Oka. Audley was Audley was the prize fighter king because it it was kind of like the amateurs, right? Three rounds, it suited him. Honestly, it suited him. <clears throat> Yeah, James Tony was in Prize Fighter. Yeah, lost to Jason Gavin. Who won it that year? Was it? It was Audley. It was. It was Audley who won it into it. That was 2013. I remember it because it was either just before or just after Frotch Groves won. Yeah, I think Clark is going to knock out Zorro. Yeah. <laughs> I think he's going to knock out Zorro. I don't know, bro. Uh, Kelbrook is done. Kelbrook is done. As much as I don't rate Connor that highly, I think he'd beat Kelbrook right now, yeah. I think he'd beat Kelbrook right now. Okay, dokey, one second, guys. Okay. Yeah, that's true, actually. Wilder did hit Audley several times on the back of the head. Yeah, he did. <clears throat> Gary Cully's back versus Francesco Patera. Yeah, another guy that Ivan Mendy beat, yeah. And Keyshawn Davis beat Patera as well, yeah. Yeah, Curry, Cully should beat him, but I don't rate Cully that highly. I don't really rate him that highly. He's a tall, lanky guy, but chinny as hell. Chinny as hell. Who did he get knocked out by? That Mexican dude. I forgot his name. Felix. Jose Felix, maybe? 
think his name was Jose Felix, the guy who knocked him out. And then Jose Felix, they done him dirty because he... So he knocked out Gary Colley, who was a lightweight. And then they had this guy fight a fucking welterweight in um, Lewis Crocker. Done that guy dirty, man. So it was like a punishment for knocking out a prospect. They fed the guy to like a guy two weight classes higher. And the guy missed weight as well, the, the, the welterweight, and he missed weight. Crazy. Fight a safety, though. Fight a safety. Would Tank beat Connor Ben, or would Ben's size advantage bless him? Honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if Tank beat Connor Ben. To be honest, have you have you seen Connor Ben on his return? He's looked bad. He's looked really bad. Yeah, Estrada was supposed to face Ioka, but Ioka wouldn't accept the terms. So now he's facing Martinez. I'm guessing Martinez is taking a huge pay cut. Oh, really? Do you know what it was about? Was it about money? Was it Ioka supposed to go to America or was Estrada going to Japan? If that's true, as much as I rate Ioka, like you got to be, you got to be, he's got to be flamed for that. Yeah, good fight. Juan Francisco, uh, Francisco Estrada versus Rodriguez. I think though, I think though Estrada is uh, obviously coming towards the end now. He's coming towards the end. So, um, when did when did Estrada last fight? It was Roman Gonzalez in 2022, and he's yeah, he's gonna he'll probably he'll probably come back like way past it. Maybe I'll be wrong. Maybe I'll be wrong, but... Tyler Benny, Felix Cash is a good fight. Lewis Crocker versus Connor Walker. I think Crocker wins. But yeah, Cash versus Denny is a good fight. I'd favour Hergovic, Sid, but I don't trust either one. I could see it going either way. I could see it going either way. Like people are saying about Dubois' mental vulnerabilities, which obviously exist. I'm not denying them. But like like I was saying earlier, like Hergovic for me hasn't impressed me recently. The Zhang fight gave me a lot of concerns how he was turning away from shots. That's a that's a bad bad sign. I don't I don't care where you, where you're at in your career. What's happened? That's a bad sign. That's not good. And I think Dubois got the power to fluster Hergovic. Obviously, the same goes for Hergovic. He's got he's got the power to fluster Dubois. You could see either guy quitting. That, right? Honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if either guy quit. Wouldn't be surprised if either guy quit. Chisora versus Johnny Fisher. As shot as shot as Chisora is, he'd still beat Johnny Fisher. I'm not sure either, Waved. I'm not sure either. Yeah, everyone's so confident Shiraz beats Ammo Williams. I'm not so sure. Neither am I. I see that one as it's one of the harder fights to call for me on that card. I think that's 50-50. Ultimately, both guys are unproven. Both guys have shown they have some ability, they have talent. They've got some good knockouts, but both guys have also shown they have vulnerabilities. We saw Hamza Shiraz 
against Bradley Skeet lose rounds. I saw Amo Williams not looking too hot against Dennis Duglin, I think it was. There's been a couple of fights where, where Amo hasn't looked too good. So I don't know, man. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know about that one. I wouldn't I wouldn't like to pick it right now. I'd have to really think about it. Who's more limited, Johnny Fisher or Campbell Hatton? Uh, Campbell Hatton. One thing about Johnny Fisher, as limited as he is technically, and he is very limited, he's still a strong guy. He's still a strong guy, at least. Campbell Hatton isn't even strong at his weight. At least Johnny Fisher's strongish. Like he's, and he can hit a little bit. Not a big puncher, but he can hit a little bit. In a in a pound for pound sense, Campbell Hatton can do neither one of those things. He's not strong. He can't punch, and he seems to have an okay gas tank, Johnny Fisher, whereas Campbell doesn't. So as bad as Johnny is, or as ordinary as Johnny is, I put him above Campbell Hatton. What should now, Sid, be like the most boring 12-round fight you'll ever see? That would be, that'd be hilarious, honestly. If it's like the most boring jab fest or like nothing fest, like nothing happens, pouring jabs and that's it. It could, it could be that fight. I think it will be that fight until somebody throws a punch and lands a punch. I don't think it's going to be a great fight until we see something, until something happens. It'll kind of, it'll, it'll kind of follow a similar pattern to the Parker fight, though Wilder won't be boxing. He'll be standing off as well. Both guys are going to be standing off, trying to pull with their lead hand and look for the one opportunity to land their straights. That's what these two guys are going to do. It could really be down to who pulls the trigger first, honestly. It could be as simple as that, this fight. And who do you have faith in pulling the trigger first? If it comes down to that, based on their last two fights, I would say Zhang. But Zhang, man, is, bro, he... He's there, like... I don't know. It's, it's a hard fight. I think, I think it's a harder fight to call than people think. I'm taking I'm taking Zhang, but would I be surprised if Wilder lands and knocks him out? No, I wouldn't be surprised. I know people are going to say that's reactionary because of Zhang's last fight, but it's not just that, it's the conditioning, it's the age. Ade said that Wilder is one win away from an AJ fight. I think he knows something. He may do. He may do. Imagine, though, imagine this fight turns into a slugfest. These two big lumps swinging at each other. Wilder gets dropped a couple times early on, hanging, hanging on for dear life, like doing the Bambi leg fucking shuffle. Zhang gasses out and Wilder knocks him out. Can you imagine if something like that happens? I'm hoping it's a good fight like that. I'm hoping we get knockdowns on either side and we get a and, and we get a violent fun fight. That's what I'm hoping for. Knock like knockdowns galore. The issue with Zhang, he is there to be hit in a sense, but like he is very he is very um crafty on the counter. He can, one thing about Zhang, for all his faults, he can counter surprisingly quickly. That's the thing. Is Wilder going to throw? We know Zhang, based on his last fight, won't throw much, but he will throw some. I mean, he, he dropped Parker a couple times. And Parker said, by the way, that's the hardest he's been hit was against Zhang. And Parker's fought AJ. He's fought Wilder. 
He's fought Ruiz. And he and he said Zhang was the hardest he's been hit. And people are people are gonna say, I hate you know when fighters say that, they'll say, Oh well, Joe Joyce knocked him out, Joe Joyce must hit harder. Now Joe Joyce just hit him a lot more. Joe Joyce Joe Joyce stopped him via accumulation. But in terms of one punch, he said Zhang was uh, the hardest he's been hit. Yeah, Zhang outweighs Wilder by about 60 plus pounds of natural weight and has good technique and power. His gas tank is his great weakness and Wilder has proven there's not quit in him. That's true. That's true. If Wilder can somehow get through those rounds, even if he gets dropped a couple times, he's still, got, he's still alive. It could be fascinating. You're, you're selling the fight to me. I love the fighters. I, I like the fight. I really do. But you're selling it to me more. Yeah, Wilder can realistically win, but Wilder's defense is awful. Zhang should be able to piece him up. With that said, Wilder has the better stamina. If he can take Zhang late, he can win. Yeah, I, I agree. I agree. So are we saying Zhang's best chance is early? Like first half. And like I was saying earlier, what I really like about that fight is that it's a loser leaves town fight, basically. It's a loser, it's a loser leaves town fight, isn't it? Because the, the loser of that fight is um is in a bad spot. Let's let's just be honest about it. You know, 38 or 40 losing, you know, back that would be back to back losses for either guy. You can't see him coming back from it at that point. That's, that's another reason I like the fight. It, it's what's on the line. It's the high stakes. I like those sort of fights sometimes. Those loser, loser leaves town type of fights. Where, where, where you feel there's a lot on the line. It doesn't have to be a title all the time. It doesn't have to be a title all the time. <clears throat> I don't think Wilder's stamina is amazing, bro. We saw that against Tyson Fury. But I feel he could. I feel he's got better stamina than Zhili Zhang, because like the Tyson Fury fights were like second and third were like hard on Wilder, right? Like Fury was putting a lot on him. But the Parker the Parker Zhang fight was low output. It was like there wasn't a lot happening, and Zhang still gassed. So I'd say I'd say Wilder's gas tank is better. To be honest. But probably not there's probably not a crazy crazy amount in it in it, but I'd probably give um, Wilder the edge in terms of gas tank. That's a, I think it's a fascinating fight though. I'm kind of interested in um, Joe Stunner's opinion on Dubois Hergovich. Because I'm not as sold on that one as many people are. Like, a lot of people I see are pretty big ba on backing Hergovich. And I can understand why. I can understand why. But for me, I, 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 just, I just don't trust Hergovich like that. I don't. I, I don't trust him like that. I rated him very highly on in the amateur scene and his first few pro fights, but... I really don't like his development as a pro. I really don't. I didn't like his body language in the Zhili Zhang fight. Um, the Dempsey McKean fight didn't really impress me. It's like his work now is so laboured. There's no dynamism to his game. In the amateurs, he was a lot more herky-jerky. There was a lot more speed to his work. It looked like his punches were, were more snappy. He was quicker. Maybe it's because he's put a bit too much weight on. I don't know. I don't know, but I, I've I've just not been impressed with Hergovich for a long, long time. Long, long time.
Yeah, I like it as well. They're, they're creative. They're creative. Um, apology. When it comes to these Saudi Arabian cards, the, the promotional um, material was creative. Like, but uh, did you see the trailer for this one? It looked like um, it was like Guy Ritchie directed it. Yeah, I've always felt Hergovic is good, but overrated. I don't think he's progressed as many said he would. And I think Dubois has improved and turned a corner. It's a close fight. Basically how I see it. It's basically how I see it. I see it as 50-50. Maybe, maybe slightly leaning towards Hergovic. But I'm not confident in any sense in that one. At all. I wouldn't like to bet on that fight. Yeah, it was like uh, Lock, Stock, Two Smoking Barrels. It's interesting as well because I watched that movie like for the first time in years on the weekend. And I love that movie so much, man, Lock, Stock. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get flamed for saying it and because I love Snatch as well, but I prefer Lock, Stock to Snatch. I know, I know that's an unpopular opinion, but... I prefer Lockstock. I just found it more... I found it funnier, certainly. Lockstock definitely has a better ending, but that's just me. That's just me. I, I liked Lockstock. I really did. I, I thought that was so fucking fun. And the ending is just so much better. It's just something you could picture. It just reminded me of something like me and my mates would do, like how it ended, you know, when they, they spoiler alert, but they was going to throw the, gun, the guns away that were worth like hundreds of thousands. I just feel like that's something I could... I could relate to me and my mates doing something like that. Prime Mayweather versus Prime Crawford. I say Prime Mayweather. I take Mayweather over Crawford. Prime for Prime. And it depends what 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 are you referring to as Prime? But I like those sort of movies anyway. Movies like Snatch, Lock, Stock, etc. I like those movies. There was a recent one as well, The Gentleman. That was pretty good. That was a Guy Ritchie movie. That was decent. For a modern movie, it was pretty good. Layer Cake was a good movie as well. That's a really underrated movie. Layer Cake. I like that one. In Bruges was a good film. I think that's Colin Farrell. That's a great movie. They don't make movies like that anymore, though, really. They're just too, um, I don't know, too safe these days. Take themselves too seriously. See, I like The Gentleman. I just like those sort of movies, like, they don't take themselves too seriously. I think it's because it had the Guy Ritchie style. I'm just a, I'm just a sucker for that sort of movie. I'm I'm not a I'm not like um a sci-fi guy to be honest. I've not checked out Dune. Yes, yeah, so I like Pretty Boy Floyd at 135 would beat Crawford. Yeah, absolutely. 147 Mayweather versus 147 Crawford is probably a more interesting fight.
Nah, Congo's a bad style matchup for Florian Marku. Florian Marku should fight a guy like, I don't know. Um, he needs to fight a brawler, basically. A brawler. That would match up with, with uh, Florian's style better. He's always going to struggle with that lanky mover. He's always going to struggle. He doesn't have the ability to get close quickly. Or, or get. He doesn't have the ability to get his way inside. And even when he does, he smothers his work. That fight kind of showed his limitations with uh, Congo. Kind of shown his limitations. <clears throat> I've not seen the National Treasure with Nicolas Cage now. Nah. I don't think I have anyway. I don't... Stoppage, I think it'll go the distance, Fury Usyk. I think it'll go the distance. Honestly, I think it'll go the distance. It depends on how that... For me, that fight depends on how it's officiated. Largely. I, I really do, but that's just me. Weirdly, though, Am I the only one? But I'm not hyped for that fight at all right now. Tyson Fury Usyk. I'm more hyped for for, for uh, Baterbia Vivo, to tell you the truth, and this Saudi card. I want to see that card. I'm more hyped for that card than, than any other card right now. I think Fury will beat Usyk. People dislike him so much, they forget how good he is. Do you think he'll beat Usyk legitimately is the question, <clears throat> Sid. <clears throat> I'm not saying Fury can't win that fight. I am saying I don't, I'm not sure he can win that fight legitimately. Like, forget Nganu. Just forget Nganu. Some people think that fight was a fix. Fair enough. Let's say it was. Did you guys not see the Otto Valin fight? Euro level Otto Valin? <clears throat> and people, when I was criticizing Otto Valin, people thought I was just doing it to um, beat up on Tyson Fury. No, I've never rated Otto Valin. You saw it in the Anthony Joshua fight. What his level is. People didn't see that Fury fight with Valin. People here, many people in this chat will say Wilder is one of the most limited heavyweight champions of all time. You didn't see the third Wilder fight? Were you impressed with Fury against Chizora? I, I, I maybe it's because Fury doesn't respect these guys. Maybe it's because Fury is so confident in himself he's not training properly. I get that. That could be Fury has that character to him. He does. <clears throat> but also he's 35, 36. Who has a guy who hasn't lived his life, who's done drugs, lived a bad lifestyle. Who's further removed from their prime, would you say? Who's further removed from their prime? Alexander Usyk or Tyson Fury? For me, the answer's clear. <clears throat> I 
<clears throat> Beterbiev Bivol is a more competitive fight, in my opinion. Great fight. See, weirdly, I'm looking forward to it, but I'm not convinced it's going to be more competitive. I'm not. There's this as well, Matt. I don't think I can fully believe it until they're in the ring. There's that as well. Oh, yeah. Imagine if Fury Usyk ends up being a war. and no, Yeah, because no one expects it. That'd be the best outcome. If we if we get a great fight, <clears throat> that'd be the best outcome. Yeah, they're both overrated to a certain degree. I absolutely. AJ was so overrated to the point to where people who disliked his fanboys underrated him, if that makes sense. Does that make sense? Like AJ is so jarring. I don't even talk about AJ because either his fanboys cry or people who don't like him cry. What AJ is, is a very good heavyweight who's no Mike Tyson or no like prime Vladimir or Vitaly. He's a very good heavyweight. <clears throat> yeah, pro I think the problem is Fury will maul, clinch and hold an open hand jab for stinker points win, yeah. It's also, it's also common knowledge that Fury is bang on the sniff. Every Warren show I've been at, he's disappearing off to the toilets every 15 minutes. Yeah, he still has those cokehead mannerisms, doesn't he? He still has those mannerisms. Tanaka definitely has... Well, Tanaka got completely schooled last time and stopped. You'd give him a better chance due to age, but I don't know. Coming back from that's going to be a tall order. I'm sure he's got demons. You'd favour Ioka again, but it'd be more competitive this time, I'm sure. And hey, that, that was the least, you know, Nordic, that was the least predictable fight. Oh, sorry, most predictable fight, sorry. Most predictable fight all of last year, Valin versus Joshua. <clears throat> Yeah, I think people are simply worn out by the whole never-ending Fury Usyk saga. Yeah, have long ago slipped into the wake me up when we get there mode. I agree. I totally agree. Is there any Serbian boxers? And um, there's that Kaladzic guy who fought Baturbiev. You know, Hot Rod. He fought Baturbiev a few years ago. <clears throat> I think he's Serbian. He may be somewhere. He may be. I think he is Serbian. Or was. Yeah, he's Serbian. Can't think of any others right now. Any Serbian fighters. I don't think sir, a boxing is really a big thing in Serbia, though, right? You would think it would be, considering the, the sort of country Serbia is. Like, hard people. Yeah, I agree. Uh, PSK, uh, Junto Nakatani, for me, is one of the more exciting fighters in Japan outside of Inoue. If you're looking at, like, the next guys after, the next guys after him, he's right up there for me, Junto Nakatani. And he's big as well. Like he's at bantamweight now. And he's like, what is he? Five foot seven, southpaw, 67 inch reach. Very, very hard to beat. He's going to be very hard to beat. Even at bantamweight right now, I don't take anyone beating him. Whether it's Emmanuel Rodriguez, Takuma Inoue. I think he was Croatian. Yeah, Marco Kalic. Yeah, Croatian. Yeah, he was Croatian, 100%. Pretty certain.
But anyway, guys, I'm going to wrap it up here. I'm going to wrap it up here. I need to I need to wake up tomorrow. Um, got an early-ish start. So, yeah, I'm going to wrap it up here. Um, have a great one, guys. Have a great rest of your week. Uh, stay safe, all that good shit. And, yeah, hopefully we can get some prediction videos out in the coming days. We shall see. We shall see. I'll try and get one done for Ryan Garcia versus Devin Haney, but I feel like you guys know what I'm going to say on that one anyway. So may not be any point. We may we may just do a standard little preview for it. No real prediction. Um, but yeah, I'll, I'll see you guys on another one. I'll try and do this once a month or maybe once every two weeks. We'll see what we can do. But yeah, have a great night, guys. Have a great day, great week, etc. Peace out.